Hello, in this video we're going to look at the operation and wiring of a standard S-Plan heating system when combined with solar thermal heating. In a previous video we looked at the S-Plan heating system in detail and this video picks up with that one finished so you may wish to look at that one first. So let's strip back to the basic S-Plan with all the plumbing and components in place. The only thing missing here is the hot water tank. And here it is. You'll notice that this hot water tank now has two heating coils. The top one will be heated by the S-Plan heating system and the main lower one will now be heated by the solar thermal. So let's get that installed. Here we have a conventional roof. On the south facing side we fit the collector and this is plumbed directly to the heating coil in the hot water tank via a pump. The sun comes out and does its magic, warming up the water in the collector and then the pump circulates the hot water through the heating coil in the hot water tank. Of course this should only operate when there's hot water available to benefit the system. Therefore the system needs a controller and one two, three sensors to help the controller know when there's a benefit to be had. One sensor will tell the controller the temperature of the domestic hot water in the tank. The other two sensors will compare the difference between the domestic hot water temperature and the temperature of the water in a solar thermal collector. The temperature in a solar thermal collector needs to be greater than the hot water temperature for a gain to be achieved. When the controller can see that the domestic hot water needs heating and that there is a gain to be had from the solar thermal collector, it will switch on the pump and circulate the water from the collector around the heating coil in the hot water tank, heating up the domestic hot water. If at the same time the S-Plan controller is also calling for hot water, then it will open up the hot water valve and trigger the pump and boiler to circulate hot water around the secondary core in the tank. This will continue until the sensor on the tank tells the solar thermal controller that it is satisfied then both will stop, even if the S-Plan controller is still calling for hot water. In an S-Plan only system, the temperature of the hot water is controlled by the cylinder stat. However, here we have the sensors controlling the temperature of the hot water so the cylinder stat is no longer needed. Let's also get rid of all the pipe work. And now let's take a look at the wiring arrangements for this combined system. Firstly, let's quickly reconnect what remains of the S-Plan system. Retaining the wiring centre, let's install the permanent lines and neutrals. Again, CPCs have been excluded for clarity, but the system components and exposed conductive parts needs to be earthed in line with BS7671. Now let's install all the switch lines for the central heating system. Remember the detail of this system is explained in our S-Plan heating systems video, but we'll recap the basics here. With the programmer calling for heating, its switch closes, and then the system looks to the room stat to see if heat is required. When the room stat is calling, this then completes the circuit to the motorised valve for the central heating. Once the motorised valve is energised, it opens and closes the micro switch, switching the permanent live grey onto the switch line orange. This is wired back to the wiring centre and connected up to the pump and boiler. With this part of the circuit complete, the pump and the boiler both fire up and the hot water is circulated round to the central heating system. Now let's take a look at the wiring for the hot water. In the S-Plan system, the hot water system takes its supply from the permanent live of the programmer, and this is no longer the case. The hot water is now controlled by the solar thermal side. So let's start with the solar thermal controller. Firstly, the panel needs its own permanent supply. Also, each of the sensors will be wired back to the panel and you should follow the manufacturer's instructions to do this. The pump also needs a switch line and neutral to operate when required. 
As the sun comes up and the system starts to warm up, the temperature in the solar thermal collector will rise and hot water will be circulated around the heating coil in the hot water tank just as the solar thermal controller requires. At the same time, a switch line is fed from the controller to the hot water side of the programmer. From there, it goes up to the motorized valve controlling the hot water. When the programmer calls for hot water, the switch will close and this will complete the circuit to the motorized valve. With the hot water valve energized, it will open, closing its micro switch and switching its permanent live onto its orange cable down to the pump and boiler, completing the circuit. And now we have both the S-Plan and solar thermal systems working together to heat up the water in the hot water tank. This will continue until the temperature inside the hot water tank has been satisfied. Remember of course that the S-Plan side of this system will only operate if the solar thermal controller and the hot water programmer are both calling for heat. The solar thermal controller also deals with other safety issues mostly involving temperature and pressure in the sealed system so you should always follow the manufacturer's instructions when installing. However, this wiring system does represent a typical solar thermal S-Plan combination. Thank you for watching.